Halo Infinite is a disaster right now, and that pains me to say because it's probably my favorite multiplayer Halo of all time. We're going to be talking about what went wrong in today's video, just how bad things are, and realistically, whether there's hope for 343 to turn things around in the future. And I want to just preface this video by reiterating that I love Halo Infinite. What's there is great. The shooting, the foundations of the game, the map movement, the equipment, it's all perfect. It does feel like a true sequel to Halo 3 for me. That being said, that makes the fact that the game is has been so mishandled hurt even more. Let's take a look at the health of Halo Infinite before really examining what went wrong. Unfortunately, there are only a few available metrics for which to gauge a game, but if we take a look at Halo's Steam Charts numbers, we can see just how abysmal the Steam player base is. This weekend, Halo Infinite dropped below 3,000 concurrent players. This is for a free-to-play game. Steam, again, is not the only platform that Halo is being played on. Xbox will have significantly more users. Others are also playing on the Windows Game Store or other places, but to drop below 3,000 and to not hit above 20,000 users the entire week? Those are, to be frank, absolutely horrendous, awful numbers. What's more, if we compare the player base to December, the game at that point was averaging 51,000 players. In November, it was 102. In February, we've been down to 14,000, and the numbers are just trending the complete wrong way. This looks to be a death spiral. This is important because it shows that the player base is not only low, but also seriously declining as people, including myself, are losing interest in the game. Another interesting metric is that this month, Halo dropped to as low as 3,000 players playing. In December, it never dropped below 40,000. As a comparison, here are some other games which never dropped below 5k, and I'll start with some that are less surprising go to the more surprising ones. So we have Civilization 6, Team Fortress 2, Left 4 Dead 2. Then we have Euro Truck Simulator, Sea of Thieves, which is actually also free on Game Pass, and even Cyberpunk 2077. The fact that Halo Infinite is pulling these numbers as a free-to-play game with also a single-player component is just baffling. I mean, I think very realistically we're going to see a point over the next few months where the Master Chief Collection actually surpasses Halo Infinite on Steam when it comes to concurrent players. Infinite has actually seen a significantly worse drop-off in terms of players than the Master Chief Collection, which is pretty ridiculous because the Master Chief Collection is not free to play and was actually released on console five or six years before it came on Steam, and most of the games are over a decade old. So Steam is one metric we have for players because it does represent a portion of the PC player base. Another way to gauge interest is by looking at Twitch. Now obviously the popularity of a game on Twitch doesn't necessarily one for one correlate with the popularity of the game overall, but you can still see the really disappointing trend in general interest in Halo Infinite. And to be honest, the numbers would be far worse if there weren't several big events which offered Twitch drops which have artificially inflated the overall viewership. As I'm recording this, Halo Infinite is the 51st most popular game on Twitch. It's averaging about 7,000 viewers over the past 7 days, and realistically that's less than one large to medium sized streamer, so that's not good. As a comparison with some other shooters, at the time I'm recording this, remember Halo Infinite averaged 7,000 viewers over the past week, Call of Duty Warzone had 63,000, Destiny 2 had 9,000, the mobile game Clash Royale had 8,000. Elden Ring, which hasn't even released yet, 8.4 thousand. As a note, I'm extremely excited for that game. I've been playing through Dark Souls 1 and 3, and I will be playing it on the X2 Twitch. Valorant and Fortnite are both above 100,000. And just general, there's very low interest, and it's not good. So things are really bad. This is a free-to-play game, and there's no general interest in it, which is concerning, especially because this is supposed to be the ultimate Halo game, the one that's meant to last for 10 years, the one that cost a kajillion dollars and that had all these microtransactions in it so it would be a live service experience. It's the first Halo game that launched simultaneously on PC and Xbox and is more accessible than ever and no one seems to be playing. Obviously these numbers I've talked about aren't the entire picture. They're the raw numbers we have accessible to us. There's more going on on the Xbox and there are certainly a lot more players than just those on Steam but already certain ranks of players are having trouble finding matches. That is very bad. You guys can let me know what it's been like for you, but I'll share my experience. I played a lot of Halo Infinite upon release, especially when I was grinding through the Battle Pass. In total, on Steam, I have over 200 hours. That is a lot of gameplay. That being said, I haven't played the game for probably two or three weeks. And what's even more concerning to me is that all of my buddies who were a part of a sort of Halo revival, it felt like, have dropped off. For a while, every night, the guys and I were hopping on Halo Infinite, playing some games, pushing ranked or customs, and now everyone has moved on to Apex or whatever else, 
and just lost interest. Why is this happening? Well, it's a mix of the fact that this isn't seemingly a live service game. There was very little launch content and some of the decisions made by 343 or the higher ups at Microsoft were so greedy that they could only possibly be justified by a game receiving regularly and meaty updates. Let's talk about the other really popular shooters in the niche right now, especially the ones with real staying power. Games like Fortnite or Apex. They have a robust shop, they have frequent events, and the game is constantly being changed because that's honestly what players need nowadays for there to be any sort of ongoing interest. But the game also needs to launch with enough features to keep fans engaged, and that's I think Halo Infinite's most serious sin. The game launched with less maps than pretty much any other Halo game except maybe Halo 5. And that's to say nothing of the game play offerings, which are just abysmal. Right now, and this is true, there are five ranked maps in Halo Infinite. That's less than Star Wars Squadrons launched with. Add to that the fact that there's only four or five multiplayer modes and less in ranked, you're getting a very, very stale experience. In contrast, let's take a look at what Halo 3 launched with in 2007, with a portion of the team and no promise of a live service model. Halo 3 launched with Construct, Epitaph, Guardian, High Ground, Isolation, Last Resort, Narrow, Arrows, Snowbound, and The Pit, all of which could be played in 4v4. Also, Halo 3 was released in September, and by December, we got the Heroic Map Pack. Now, to be fair, this did cost 800 Microsoft points, or the cost of one half of a Halo Infinite armor bundle, but we got three new maps, including Foundry, which could serve as a template for basically an infinite number of maps in Forge Mode. And yeah, Forge Mode did exist, so you could not only make new maps, but also new game types and customs or wherever else. The game just felt so much more alive than the sterile, pitiful offerings we have in Halo Infinite now. If we look at Halo 5 Guardians, well, the comparison becomes much, much worse for Halo Infinite. Halo 5 gave us four major updates, one monthly in the first four months after release. This gave us everything from Forge Mode, God knows when that will come to Halo Infinite, and several new maps. Halo Infinite, comparatively, which was billed as this live service game, launched in essentially a beta form, doubled the time for Season 1 from three months to six months, which is an absolutely horrendous and ridiculous way to launch a game, and is offering basically nothing during this launch time period. This whole it's a live service game is an absolute joke. The game was meant to launch last year, and I genuinely do not know what it would have included. Like, one map with Team Slayer? The most recent sort of thing here was the February mid-season update, which, to be honest, had a patch note's worth of changes, and no new content. Small things like changing the distance on the radar in Big Team Battle, helping with the netcode, which, to be honest, is important, but is not a mid-season update. And I just don't get it. The game is barren, and they launched it like this, and there's no interest now. The game is going to die. There's no co-op. There's no Forge. There's five Team Slayer maps. It will be six months before any new content. Big Team Battle was largely unplayable for a while. Theater mode is broken. Forge mode is gone. The game is filled with cheating and the private servers aren't even stable enough for tournaments to run smoothly. And trust me, I know that. It's just, it's baffling. I'm a huge fan of the game, how it works, but the way it's been managed is, it's ridiculous. Especially given the fact that the small events that have been in the game have really just been nothing. This game obviously needed another year or six months in development because it's horrendous right now. And that's ignoring the fact that it was shipped in this state with an absolutely horrendously priced store and among the greediest monetization systems I've seen in a free-to-play shooter. I don't know, I just don't know. I want to be hopeful about Halo Infinite, but I've got no reason to be at this point. The most shocking thing about this to me is that the game didn't launch with any big new experience. Most Halo games, at least since Halo 3, have tried to have a new big hit feature. And to be honest, for shooters, that's kind of important in the current landscape. That can be Warzone or Firefight or something else. This game had none of that. It simply added more players to Big Team Battle, which I don't think they're even using right now. Had 343, say, launched a Battle Royale, or launched a large-scale game mode or launched something new, then I think the really poor launch offerings in terms of maps and game modes would have been understandable. I know people don't want a battle royale in Halo. First of all, you're wrong. Halo gameplay would translate incredibly to a battle royale, but either way, it doesn't have to be that. It could have been any new thing to get eyes on the franchise. I think a battle royale or something is probably coming in the future, but I just wonder whether the game is going to be beyond repair at this point. The numbers are really, really bad. If this was a paid game, I think it would be pretty much dead. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought. I know this video was really negative, but I just can't help but feel that way about Halo Infinite. The game is a blast when it works. The game is a blast when there's content that feels fresh, but right now it's just not good. Let me know what you guys think. Until next time, be safe. Have a good one and may the force be with you.